Somewhere in San Francisco, a group of people are getting ready for a bot fight in an alley. The current champion, Yama, kills the other bot and dares anyone else to beat him. Hiro Hamada, a 14-year-old genius boy real name Ryan Potter, steps into the ring with a tiny bot that makes everyone laugh. He dares to put an end to Yama's bot. Much the bot fight participation is restricted and you must pay before starting the fight and nobody expects this youngster to have any money. Well, Hiro pays his entry fee and embarks on a fight. His bot against Yama's robot. Before you know it, Hiro's bot attacks and breaks the opponent but doesn't make it. Everyone laughs at the innocent kid, but Hiro is so determined to win. He again pays for a rematch and then shows how good his bot is. Surprisingly, his bot fixes itself and is able to break Yama's bot into pieces. Hiro gets his money, but an angry Yama wouldn't let him go. He sends his goons to deal with him. Hiro's older brother Tadashi, starring Daniel Henny, is on his motorcycle and lucky enough for Hiro, he has just got a savior to help him. Hiro gets out of there with the help of Tadashi as he blames and questions him for putting his little life in danger, but they both get arrested. Moving forward, Aunt Cass comes to the rescue of the boys. She is deeply angry with them and takes them back to their house, which is right above the cafe she runs. She is not pleased by the two boys much as you and I agree Tadashi doesn't have a hand in the whole occurrence. We find out that she has been taking care of them since their parents died 10 years ago and well, she has entertained their trouble enough and couldn't take it any further. Tadashi asks Hiro what he plans to do with his life now that he has finished high school at the age of 13. Then, Tadashi takes Hiro somewhere with him. Hiro joins his brother and go to Tadashi's college, the San Francisco Tech Institute where he introduces Hiro to his other genius inventor friends, Gogo Tamago, Jamie Chun, who has made a motorcycle with electromagnetic wheels, Wasabi, Damon Wayans, Jr., who is working with a plasma laser, Honey Lemon, Genesis Rodriguez, a bright and energetic girl who makes a big purple smoke bubble, and Fred, T.J. Miller, who is just a school mascot but is super interested in science. Meanwhile, Hiro has been wanting to know what his big brother has been working on. This is the time to find out. At Tadashi's office, he puts a duct tape on Hiro's forearm and rips it off in a room. Hiro screams in pain. Luckily, someone comes to help, a robot named Baymax, an artificial intelligent robot that works a healthcare partner, for short a robot nurse. He figures out how bad Hiro's pain is and gives him something to make it go away. When Hiro says he's happy with the results, Baymax turns off. As we see, James Cromwell, who plays Tadashi's professor Robert Callahan, walks in. Hiro knows him from his studies and research, which makes him want to go to this school and learn more. Tadashi tells Hiro that if he wants to become part of the winning team, he can do so by joining the school, but before that he has to demonstrate his intellect to Callahan at a school showcase. Back home, Hiro starts to think of ideas, but he gets upset because he can't think of anything good. Hiro is helped by Tadashi who pulls him and shakes him round until he starts to develop new ideas. Later on, we see Hiro's latest invention is done after he and Tadashi and his friends worked on it for a long time. It is time for the big show. Hiro, Tadashi, and their friends ride around the room in barrels. Hiro is very anxious. But Tadashi helps him keep his cool though the introductory speech was wacky. Nonetheless, Hiro shows Callahan and everyone else's innovation the microbots. When he takes one out, it looked useless until he explains how a microbot connects with a lot more others out of the barrels to perform limitless imaginable acts. Hiro explains if you can think it, microbots can do it for you. This was an awesome innovation that captured everyone's attention. People are all shocked. Alistair Cray, Alan Tudyk, the head of Cray Tech, comes up to Hiro after the show and he is crazily interested in buying the microbots. But Hiro tells him they are not for sale. Then, Callahan gives Hiro an envelope with an invitation to sign up for classes. Outside, Hiro tells Tadashi how grateful he is that he brought him to school. Hiro wants to know if Tadashi believes in him. People start screaming all at once. Hiro and Tadashi run back to the building and see that it's on fire. Callahan is still inside Tadashi, 
with his kind heart wants to move back into the house to help his professor unfortunately. As soon as Tadashi walks in, there is an explosion. Then, Hiro calls his brother, Tadashi, Tadashi. Sadly, Tadashi is gone. Both Tadashi and Professor Callahan are remembered at a memorial. Hiro and Cass are so upset that Hiro doesn't want to join the school anymore. Matter of fact, he can't think of a life without Tadashi. So Tadashi's friends go to his house to comfort them. After some time, Hiro is still in his room, crying over the death of his brother. He picks up his little robot, and a piece falls on his foot. He screams out in pain, and Baymax comes back to life. He tries to help Hiro feel better, but Hiro denies and keeps saying, I am okay. Meanwhile, the last of Hiro's microbot is moving around in its container, which Baymax notices. In an attempt to comfort Hiro or at least make him move on, Baymax embarks on a journey to find Hiro's microbots. Baymax decides to go where it points, which takes him out into the streets. Hiro chases him all the way to a warehouse. Inside, they find that the microbot is trying to connect to thousands of other microbots that someone else made. Then, all of these microbots work together to try to hurt Hiro and Baymax. Hiro and Baymax run away from there. He sees a man with a kabuki mask controlling the approaching microbots. Hiro pushes Baymax out the window, and he and Baymax go down together. Hiro is caught by Baymax, and they both land safely. Hiro and Baymax run to the police station to report the incident, but the officer has trouble believing them. Their explanations do not seem to make any little sense, and immediately the officer mentions calling Hiro's parent. He runs home with Baymax and decides that they need to catch the villain in a mask. Baymax agrees to do it because he thinks it will make Hiro feel better. Hiro makes Baymax a carbon fiber suit and puts a series of fighting techniques on a chip that he puts in Baymax's access port right next to the healthcare chip that Tadashi made for Baymax in the beginning. Hiro and Baymax follow the microbot back to the city's port to find the other microbots. They don't notice that a car is following them. Go Go, Wasabi, Honey, and Fred are all in this car. Baymax had previously called them all when he thought Hiro was having emotional problems and needed help from friends. The masked bad guy attacks them and he uses the help of the microbot to throw a big box at them. When Hiro tells Baymax to fight back, the bad guy throws Baymax into the air. Baymax is busy saving life. The gang gets in the car, and Wasabi drives away while the bad guy chases after them. Wasabi keeps stopping at red lights and being too careful in the middle of trouble, so Gogo takes the wheel and drives away from the microbots. They get away from the bad guy, but they crash the car into a river. All of them are brought to the surface by Baymax. Fred brings the group to his house, which is a huge mansion owned by his parents, where they can feel safe. He has a lot of monster statues, comic books, and action figures in his room. Fred figures out from the comics that the masked bad guy must be Alistair Cray and that he must have started the fire at school to steal Hero's microbots. Then Baymax says that he scanned the bad guy at the port, which means they know something about him. Afterwards, Hero thinks of a way to upgrade not only Baymax but also the other four. The plan is to get the villain's mask because he might be hiding the neurotransmitter headband under it. Hero makes clothes and weapons for the gang while they practice taking the mask off Heathcliff, Fred's butler. Honey has tungsten carbide balls that make foam and harden to trap the bad guy. Gogo has electromagnetic roller blades and discs. Wasabi has lasers on his arms. And Fred has a monster suit that jumps high and breathes fire. Hero makes a suit for himself and a new one with wings and a rocket fist for Baymax. He puts the suit on Baymax to try it out, and the two of them fly all over the city. Baymax figures out that Hero's feelings are getting better. Baymax looks at everyone in the city while the two of them sit high above the city. On an island farther from the city, he finds something that looks like the bad guy. After arriving at the island, Hero's gang find a broken down machine in a lab that has been totally abandoned. They find a video on the computer of Cray and his scientists showing off two teleportation portals they made. A woman is getting ready to go through the first portal. She is in a pod. One scientist tells Cray that he has found something strange, but Cray doesn't care. When the woman goes through the portal, it starts to shake. 
When the second portal closes, it traps the woman inside. When the portal starts to pull everything else in, the scientists have to shut it down. The group figures out that Cray is the masked villain and that he wanted to steal Hero's microbots to rebuild the portal. Just then, the masked villain attacks the group. Using their suits, they try to catch him, but Honey gets hit by one of Gogo's discs, which sadly makes Gogo to slip on one of Honey's carbide balls. As the bad guy throws Fred and Wasabi off, they run into each other. Baymax flies Hero high enough so that Hero can tackle the bad guy to the ground and take off his mask. When he turns around, Professor Callahan is there, alive and well. He tells Hero that he took the neurotransmitter and used the microbots to shield him from the explosion. Hero tells Callahan that Tadashi died trying to save him, and Callahan says that was wrong. Hero is so angry that he tells Baymax to kill Callahan. Since Baymax wasn't made to do this, Hero takes out the chip for health care and leaves the chip for fighting. Baymax is then left to attack Callahan. As the other four try to stop Baymax, but Callahan gets away just as Honey opens the access port and puts the health care chip back in place. The other three are shocked by what Hero did, and he gets Baymax to fly away in a rage. Hero and Baymax go back home so Hero can fix his scanner and look for Callahan. Then, he tries to take the health care chip out again but the access port won't open. Baymax tells Hiro that Tadashi wouldn't have wanted this, but Hiro yells that Tadashi is dead. Baymax tells Hiro that Tadashi is right here. He does this by turning on a screen on his chest that shows footage of Tadashi filming himself making Baymax. After 83 tests that didn't work, the 84th one does, and Tadashi is so happy that Baymax is now fully working. He says he can't wait to show Hero and that Baymax will change people's lives. Hero cries and gives Baymax a hug. Heathcliff brought the other four back in a helicopter, and they all hug Hero. They agree to support him and catch Callahan the right way. Honey gives Hero a jump drive with more footage on it that they found. Just after the portal closed, Callahan is shown running toward Cray in a very angry mood. Callahan gave the woman a hug right before she got into the pod. Hero stops the video and zooms in on the name Callahan on her helmet. They figure out that the woman is Abigail, Callahan's daughter, and that Callahan wants to get back at Cray. Cray has an event at the building where his company is based. Callahan shows up and starts attacking with the microbots. He then rebuilds the portal, which slowly destroys Cray's building. He plans to throw Cray through the portal after that. The heroes show up just in time to help. Callahan uses the microbots to attack Hero's friends, while Hero is thrown off Baymax and almost pulled through the portal. He makes his friends look at this from a different point of view, just like Tadashi did for him. The four fight off the microbots with their weapons. Hero is then saved by Baymax. Hero tells them to send the microbots through the portal so that Callahan has nothing he can use against them. They are able to do this, so Callahan is left with nothing. He almost goes through the portal, but Baymax grabs him just in time. The portal still works after it falls to the ground. Then, Baymax says that he sees a female in hypersleep coming through the portal. Hero rides Baymax through the portal to get to Abigail, who is still alive. They find her pod in the wreckage of Cray's building and pull her toward the portal. Baymax's armor, however, gets hit by a huge piece of debris, leaving him with only half of it. His rocket thrusters are down, and he knows he can't get them all back up. Baymax tells Hero that he can send him and Abigail back, but Hero must tell him that he is happy with his care. Hero doesn't want to lose Baymax, too, but Baymax reassures him that everything will be fine. Hero hugs Baymax with tears in his eyes and tells him that he is happy with his care. Hero and Abigail are pushed through the portal by Baymax's rocket fist as Baymax drifts away. Hero and Abigail make it out of the portal just before it blows up. Callahan is arrested while Abigail wakes up and is taken to the hospital. He watches with shame, knowing that he might never see his daughter again. The city recognizes the gang's bravery, but doesn't know who they really are. Hero hangs out with Go Go, Wasabi, Honey, and Fred at Cass's cafe. Hero puts the rocket fist down in his room. When he opens it up, the healthcare chip is still there. 
With this, Hiro puts Baymax back together the way Tadashi did. They give each other a hug. Hiro ends the movie with a voiceover in which he says that he and his friends are going to help people just like Tadashi did. When they put on their suits and bring Baymax with them, they become. It opens up. His father comes out from behind him, it's Stan Lee, and holds up a pair of spandex briefs. He wears his underwear the same way as his son, front, back, inside out, then front to back. They give each other a hug, and Fred's dad says that they have a lot to talk about. I hope you enjoyed the movie. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more movies like this one, please subscribe. Take care, and I will see you in the next movie. Peace.